All right, so there's about two types of people in this world, apparently. People who see this picture and think, oh wow, a red Tesla. Or people who see this picture and think, whoa, what a uneven paint job, panel gapped, swirly quality control nightmare. So if you're the first type of person, I've made other videos about Tesla and their competitors. They're linked below, you should check them out. But if you are that second person, well maybe Porsche Taycan is for you. So this is the Porsche Taycan Turbo. It starts at well over $100,000, but this is it. This is Porsche's all electric car, their four door sports sedan. So let's see, 670 horsepower, 250 miles of range, zero to 60 in three seconds, 93 kilowatt hour battery. But there's a lot more to a car than just the numbers, like a lot more. Continuity. So I have to see what this car was all about for myself. Like anytime you hear about Porsche Taycan, this is the car that always comes up about Porsche and the, the best electric cars and the most hyped electric cars and the best Tesla competitors. And I gotta say, after living with this car for the past two weeks or so, I think I'm actually a believer. But I have to show you what I mean. So I've talked plenty about electric cars before. This one follows the familiar battery in the floor between the wheels for the low center of gravity thing that the rest of them do. But there's a whole bunch of stuff, including the Porsche design stuff, that make this car a little bit different. Obviously Porsche's look. I happen to think the front end of this car with the headlights looks really sweet. Of course, the whole shape isn't as sporty as some of their other models. Obviously, it's a four-door, so it's a little bigger. And these aero wheels, I think, look kind of lame, hiding the massive brakes. Um, but overall, the Porsche is a good-looking sedan. Even better looking in white, which the, the Mission E has always been shown in. I think that's the spec I would want to go for. But besides just the Porsche design stuff, there is some stuff that this car does, the way it works, that is fundamentally different from the way Tesla does an electric car. And I'm, I'm using Tesla to compare because that's what I know the best, that's what most people are familiar with. But yeah, it's, it's, it's closer to the traditional car world, which I think makes sense coming from Porsche. But for one, this interior. And look, I, I was one of those people who didn't really care so much or think too hard about the interior of the car. And people would always say, Tesla's interiors are bad. And I'm like, it's fine, you're exaggerating. But then I sat in this car. And I will say, there's a difference between interior quality and interior layout. I still prefer the layout, the interior layout of a Tesla or even, you know, Ford uh, Mustang Mach-E or some others. But there is no doubt that the quality of materials with this layout they've chosen, the quality of the interior, is amazing but instead of instead of just saying that because everyone always said that to me the porsche interior is amazing instead of just saying it let me let me actually show you so the Taycan interior has screens and buttons everywhere surrounding you this spec i'm showing you is actually the vegan interior but there's a bunch of different trims you can go for most of which include all of the following so the 16.8 inch curved screen dashboard back there, the reachable touchscreen controls on the sides of that dashboard for things like the headlights, air suspension height, traction control, etc. The metal, not plastic piece on the door sill that says Taycan Turbo. These really, really nice, firm, bolstered seats, Alcantara, vegan leather, precise stitching everywhere as you'd expect, but also fully adjustable in every dimension, including the headrest, which can go forward and backward, and the actual length of the seat itself which for taller people is pretty sweet. Physical buttons for the three different driver profiles. And then a second touchscreen in the middle with a lot of the controls that's pretty responsive, but also impressively has really solid haptic feedback. So it kind of replicates the feeling of pressing another real button, which is nice. A huge physical power button to turn the car on and off. The physical metal drive mode knob, of course. The panoramic glass roof that also conveniently adds about four inches of extra headroom to the front seats. This super extra 360 degree camera view, which has a bunch of these views that are like third person views of the car, which is also always the white one for some reason. Uh, lots of controllable ambient lights throughout the cabin, including the cup holders, 
huge air vents that are controllable from a touchscreen like Model 3 and Model Y. So you can choose between diffused, blowing air into the cabin, focused, which blows air focused to actually the driving positions of my hands on the steering wheel, or individual, which lets you choose exactly where you want to blow the air. This little motor inside of the seat belt that actually pulls it snug across your chest for the people in the front seats as you start to drive and get over a certain speed. The lighted, powered USB-C ports in the front and even two more between the rear back seats, one for each passenger. And that touchscreen in the back lets them each control their own heated seats and air conditioner airflow to the same precision as the front. This little button on the bottom inside of the steering wheel that turns on the heated steering wheel and this super low key wireless charger inside the center console. You slot your phone in there, connect it to the car via Bluetooth and it just starts wireless charging in there and you can hide it away and it won't slide around when you start to drive fast. And yes, there is Apple CarPlay. So hopefully that illustrates for you the point that people have been trying to make to me for so long. It's not just saying that quality or tolerances are better but once you like sit yourself in the middle of all of this, there's even this little button in the bottom of the steering wheel, all this stuff, it's pretty next level. It's great. And now I, I kind of hope someday Tesla gets to this level for their interiors. All right, let's talk batteries and charging for a second. It's an electric car. So the Taycan over here behind me has on a good day with 100% battery, a spec of 250 miles. But two notes on that. Number one, the Taycan is significantly less efficient than the Tesla. So what that means is you guys all know miles per gallon for cars, for gasoline. For electric cars, we measure efficiency in watt hours per mile or how much energy it uses to go a mile. The lower, the better. So one of the Tesla specialties is efficiency. All of the millions of miles of driving and research they have put into powertrain for electric cars has my average watt hours per mile number in Phantom anyway, usually around 350. On a good day, a little under 300. With some spirited driving, it can be up over 400, right? And that's why they have a long range version of the Model S that can go over 400 miles. But the Taycan on the other hand, it's very sporty obviously, but I cannot for the life of me get it under consistently 400 watt hours per mile. Typically the way I drive in normal mode, 400 to 500. And uh, with some more spirited driving, it's easily over 550, 600, and you'll see even higher numbers. And so the 250 miles that it's rated for in the sportier modes can feel a lot more like 210, 220. So number two, that's when you gotta talk about charging them. So you can still charge either of these at home. They both have their own little charging kits. Although the Porsche's home charger is a bit bigger and I guess has a, a pretty big box that sits on the ground in your garage, but that's fine. But for longer road trips, and this varies depending on what part of the world you live in, but at least here in the US, Tesla supercharging network is still a pretty big advantage. Now the Taycan uses what's called the Electrify America network of chargers. And it's almost as big and you can charge just as fast on any of those fast chargers and that'll get you anywhere from zero to 100% battery or somewhere near it in like 25 minutes, which is awesome. But there's just not nearly as many of those high power chargers in the Electrify American network. So, I mean, you can just go on their sites and look at the two maps and compare for yourself. The fast chargers available to Porsche versus available to Tesla is a pretty big difference still. And those extra chargers plus the longer range go a long way towards making a more convenient driving experience for a road trip in an electric car. So that's something these cars both do differently at the moment. But I also still kind of wonder why more new electric cars coming out don't use Tesla's existing supercharger network. Right? It's out there. They've said they would allow others to use it, but they don't. And there was even a story recently about some kind of hacking cars that aren't Teslas to use the superchargers. So we know it's possible. It just isn't officially supported yet. I think I'd be way more likely to drive a Taycan confidently every day if I could just pull up to a supercharger anytime. Anyway, on to driving. So I meant what I said on Twitter. What did I say on Twitter? I said that the Porsche Taycan is the best driving electric car out right now, period. And I guess I shouldn't really be surprised because sports car driving dynamics is what Porsche does. Like that's what they're good at. But I'm still impressed. Like this car I'm driving right now weighs significantly over 5,000 pounds. The sedan I'm driving right now weighs more 
than a Ford F-150. And that's just the nature of electric cars right now, they're heavy, but yet still the, the steering feedback, the, the responsiveness, it feels more direct and flat and planted than anything else in its class, anything else I've driven. Yes, more than a Tesla, yes, more than a Model 3 and a Model S, but like, it, it doesn't feel light, don't get me wrong. You still can understand that this is a heavy car, but it feels so much sportier than anything else like it. Also, I shouldn't leave out this drive mode knob at the bottom here, it's pretty sweet. I always like that Tesla lets you change acceleration and suspension on the screen, you can go ludicrous mode and all that stuff. And there's a knob for it here, and it's a nice knob. There's something about it being a nice knob. Like if it was a dumb plastic knob, I'd be like, why is there a knob for it? I don't need one. But something about it being a nice metal knob to change driving modes, pretty cool. So Taycan has four modes, range mode, normal mode, sport, and sport plus. So range mode is pretty self-explanatory. It limits you to 70 miles an hour, lowers the car to be a little more aero, and you're just trying to get as much range as possible. So then normal mode is normal driving. Sport mode, when you flip to that, it's gonna stiffen the suspension a little bit and make the throttle response a little more direct. And then when you go to sport plus mode, it makes an even more aggressive throttle response, even stiffer, and it also lowers the car to be its more most aggressive stance and you can feel it, and it also turns on the uh, electric sport sound. All right, so I've pulled over now. I'm gonna go to Sport Plus mode so you can hear that sound. You can turn it on for other modes, but this is the sound they give you. Kind of like a spaceship type of thing, I guess. And I also, I swear, I can hear it shifting gears when it's in this like exaggerated sound mode. I don't know if that sound is added at a certain speed to make you think, oh, it's kind of like a normal car, I'm changing gears. But the Taycan does have two speed gearbox, which most other electric cars don't have. And that lets you keep accelerating harder at higher speeds. But I don't know if that's like really when it's shifting, but here, I'll do it again so you can hear it. So, okay, we're at zero. 40. Did you hear that? Did you catch that? Like that little, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually when it's changing gears. I just thought that was fascinating. And there's a whole bunch more fascinating stuff in this car that I haven't even gotten to dive into. The quad LED headlights, the door handles that motorize open and closed, the tiny front trunk that can maybe fit two backpacks, the fact that there's a backup camera and this little nub here next to it is the backup camera cleaner. I don't think I've ever seen that before in a car. The fact that pressing the brakes in this car doesn't actually squeeze the brakes right away. It actually starts off using regen with the motors up until a certain threshold, then it adds physical brakes, mixing them together. Like the fact that not quite all of this battery is available to the user and they can never fully charge the 93 kilowatt hour cell to 100% ever. That of course is to avoid the battery degradation that comes from charging to 100% repeatedly. The rear wheel steering, the torque vectoring, the 800 volt system that makes the fast charging and heating and cooling efficiency possible, the consistently hard launches from zero to 60 until the battery is nearly dead, the two speed gearbox that I think the Tesla Roadster is gonna have to learn from, the fact that there's a charging door on both sides of the car. But you know, I think you're getting the picture here. So all right, look, at the end of the day, the Taycan, is an awesome car, no doubt about it. It's an expensive car, yes, but also it's Porsche. What do you expect? They don't really make cheap cars. But the series of advantages it has at the end of the day is really impressive. The 800 volt system they've built is great. The driving experience is amazing. And I just really like that they actually put some effort into thinking about the electric car driving experience and they didn't they didn't just cough out an electric version of another one of the cars they make and that i think is what makes the taycan so special and impressive to me not just the fact that they made an electric car but the fact that there's different ways to attack making a great electric driving experience kind of like folding phones there's more than one right answer in all these first generations. So that's the end of my experience. Uh, I gotta give the Taycan back now. Shout out to Maurice from Porsche of Englewood for coordinating this whole experience, making it possible. I'll have his link below. But I wanna leave you guys with this question to end it, because we were thinking about this at the studio, 
And I think it's a fascinating question for me. If we were to drop a Porsche Taycan or an equivalent fully loaded Tesla in your driveway right now, which would you take? And would supercharging on the Taycan change that for you? For me, I would take the Taycan with supercharging, but without it, I would still take the Tesla. But I'm curious what you would think. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh,